watching The High Road with me, Keith Warren. Brought to you by Timber Creek Outdoors. You know, there's some people out there that take for granted the simple ability just to walk to your deer stand, climb up, and be able to sit in it. But for some folks, these activities just aren't possible. Well, on today's show, we'll introduce you to a group who have proven that disabilities don't have to be limiting when it comes to the great outdoors. You don't want to miss this. Welcome to Hunting and Outdoor Adventures and to Douglas, Wyoming for an annual event known as the Hell of a Hunt. The Hell of a Hunt was started 17 years ago by a group of hunters who felt the need to find a way to provide a hunting opportunity for those who are disabled and not able to hunt on their own. The Hell of a Hunt is a disabled hunt we have every year here in Douglas, Wyoming. We take 15 hunters from across the nation with, that are physically challenged, quadriplegics, we take blind individuals. It doesn't matter. We've been through uh, just about everything you can imagine, and everybody seemed to overcome their challenges when they come out here. We've had 100% success on our antelope the last 17 years, so that pretty much proves that these people are capable of doing anything they set their minds to. In 1984, Jim Zumbo received a letter from a hunter uh, thanking him for his writing. He's an outdoor writer for Outdoor Life magazine and said that he was once an avid hunter and that had become disabled over the years and now he got his enjoyment from reading the adventures of others and that he wasn't capable of hunting anymore. With Jim and along with a gentleman by the name of Bill Brown out of Colorado, uh, they asked us if what we thought if we could make a hunt for the disabled. So we asked our guides if they would participate in it and volunteer their time along with other friends and associations. And in 1985, the first hell of a hunt came to pass. And to our knowledge at the time the hell of a hunt started, it was the only hunt of this caliber in existence. Since then, there's been many hunts patterned off the hell of a hunt. It was to get individuals back out into the field and doing things that they felt were beyond their capabilities at this time. And then go back, not only to prove to themselves, but to get other individuals involved and to continue. What I enjoy most about the Hell of a Hunt is how much I learn every year and usually how humbled I am by the strength and character and capabilities of the individuals that come to hunt. We all are challenged and we all have our disabilities. The only difference is their show. Handicapped hunters at the Hell of a Hunt come here for two days to hunt antelope. We normally hunt out of four-wheel drive pickups. The Wyoming Game and Fish Department issues a permanently disabled handicapped card to all those that can prove through a doctor's application that they are permanently disabled. They still have to maintain all safety hunting regulations. The only thing it allows them to do is to shoot from the vehicle on off-road areas. When the hunters first get here, we take them out to the rifle range, sight in their rifles. That evening we have our opening banquet where everybody gets together and gets introduced and starts to become friends. It takes a special type of person to be a guide on the hell of a hunt. There are guides and then there are guides. And they've proved over the last 17 years that they're absolutely the best in the world at what they do. Their success ratio proves that. The dedication and commitment that you see year after year proves it. Their willingness to go through anything and everything to get their hunter, their antelope, is what makes it happen. When they leave, after two days, these hunters have made friends for life and our guides have made over 200 friends in the last 17 years. A hunt like this would not be possible without the participation of the landowners. We hunt on anywhere from eight to 12 different ranches. We try not to burden any one ranch with too many hunters in, but they're all so gracious they'll let us come in and a lot of times hold pastures for us until we're through. One of the main supporters of the hell of a hunt is Savage Arms. You've seen Savage Chairman and CEO Ron Coburn numerous times on the show in the past. Ron describes his involvement with the hell of a hunt. The role that Savage Arms has is to, wherever necessary, to provide the firearm, and it's not exclusively Savage. We do not monopolize the hunt. Our contribution is to help in the guiding process. So I personally will get involved each year. I'll go out there, I'll get to know the individual hunter that has been assigned to me. If they have their own rifle, that's fine. If they don't have, we'll lend them a Savage, of course. We bring 15 new people in. We only know them from paper. We have not met them personally. 
So it's a bit of a challenge sometimes. We meet these people. They don't know what to expect. We don't know what to expect. So we kind of find our way together the first couple of hours. So as the day progresses, we get more comfortable with each other. They get to realize that we're there to facilitate. We get the chance to make them feel good. And over time, they start looking forward to the very next morning's hunt. After the hunt is over, we feel that we have, again, contributed one more year to 50 more people, that they will go away with a memory that's unique, personal, something they never thought they could do perhaps again. And maybe in some cases, they have come back to actually help somebody else that's in a similar unfortunate condition. One day, one of the guides from the hell of a hunt asked me if I would like to hunt antelope in Wyoming. And well, I think I might like to do that. So he gave me an application and I thought about it for a while. And finally I said, you know, I've never hunted an antelope in Wyoming. I'm gonna give this thing a try. And sent in my application and I got drawn. And uh, that was in 1993. I came up for my first hunt, and it was such a great organization. Uh, the hunt was great, the accommodations were great, the people that run it are great, and uh, got my antelope first day, had a great time there. Went back to Colorado, and I said, you know, I'm going to come back again and see if I can help these guys out in any way I can. So I've been coming since then, and uh, this is my ninth year at the hell of a hunt, and I think it gets better every year. We're in Douglas, Wyoming, where we're tagging along with hunter Fred Tregaskis, a Vietnam vet, and his guides, Joe Today and Lou Deal, as they go after antelope. Fred's guides had come across this antelope staring right at them from over 200 yards away. As Fred waited for the buck to present him with a good shot, the antelope decided to take a rest and sit down. Fred waited patiently as the buck remained on the ground for nearly 15 minutes. Fred was a real inspiration to all of us. Fred was wounded three times in Vietnam and has been in a wheelchair since 1968. He's overcome many, many challenges. But when I saw the caliber of individual he was, I knew that there was no doubt that he was gonna get his antelope. And when the buck finally got up and moved, he walked right in front of a group of the landowner's cows. Once again, not presenting Fred with a good shot. The buck finally came in the clear, but now he was well over 300 yards away. Fred, Fred, get ready, get ready. He's a shooter, he's a shooter. Let him, let him stop, let him stop. Hold it, hold it. He's gonna turn. He's gonna turn. His guys couldn't believe the shot he made. In fact, they thought he missed. But Fred never said a word. And slowly that animal started going back and fell over. He was dead in his tracks. Woo! Nice shot, Fred! That's 300 nice. yards! That's never been a 300 yards, bud. He's going down. <laughs> Woo! Way to go! 300 yards, one shot. Look at that. Way to go. 300 yards, one huh? shot. Way to go. Way to go, bud. Thanks. Thanks a bunch. <laughs> nice antelope. We should point out that only a week after this hunt, Fred was inducted into the Soldiers and Sailors Hall of Valor in Pittsburgh for meritorious service during the Vietnam War. Congratulations, Fred. Okay, let's, uh, why don't we get him up and uh, get him out of here. Let's go home. What do you think? Let's go. Okay? Sound like a winner. All right. Thanks, guys. I'd like to thank my guides. I had, uh, I think, fantastic guides. Everyone here has been fantastic. This is probably one of the most fantastic committees, organizations, or what you want to call it, that I've ever seen. There's a massive amount of coordination, support, and, and teamwork here. And it's really, it's really been great. It's going to be hard to leave. Uh, really, some good friendship, I think, created here. The time was fantastic. I wish it could last for another week, two weeks, for a long time. I'll be back. Thank you all very much. Monday evening, 
we have an auction at the Moose where items are auctioned off and this is how we raise funds for the Hell of a Hunt. We're a 501c3 nonprofit organization and we're completely funded on our own. We have no federal sponsors or national sponsors. And we always have an auction and ever since the first year I've donated something for the auction just uh, go into their coffers to help them along with what they can do. Earlier in the day, we followed along with another hunter, Tom Cannon, as he went after his antelope with guides Jim Butler and feeder Mike Curtin. They spent much of the morning driving around, not seeing any antelope. Then they came across this herd feeding in an alfalfa field. Tom had hoped to take a non-typical antelope buck, and sure enough, one of the bucks in this herd met with his expectations. Tom Cannon and his guides, Jim and Peter Mike, had such a fun day, they hardly didn't want to see it come to an end. Finally, they got Tom on a nice antelope. Go ahead and put your bullet in. All right, yeah. And that's non-typical is what the, what you're looking for. Okay, safety's off. Be careful now. Just ease it and squeeze. And just squeeze it gently. Good shot. Hey, he's Way down. Go, Tom, you got that one. He's down. That got him. That got him right there. Let's go get him. All right, guys. That got him there. That was all right. Look at this. Boy, that's non typical. Look at that. Oh, man, that's that's nice. a that's a trophy of a lifetime, Tom. Definitely different. That's a great one. You did good. Right. I'm gonna find another one better than that. Yeah, though. you're not gonna have anything better than that. Guys a lot, okay. That was all right. Just look at that. I'll tell you what, I had two great guides. They took me out there and put me on a nice animal. And finally got the job done. It took me a while, but I'll tell you what, I think that everybody that's involved with this organization, as far as the sponsors and all that stuff, and gay and Everybody involved. In it. I think y'all do a fantastic job. And without y'all, guys like me and a lot of these others could never hope to do anything like this. And we really appreciate it. And on top of the 15 hunters, we had one individual this year that was totally blind. We have some special rifles made up with dual scopes on them for our visually challenged individuals. He harvests his antelope at 348 yards with a single shot. Bob, you are blind. Yes. Can you tell the viewers here what happened to you on a hunting trip? I was uh, <clears throat> in northeastern Wisconsin hunting rabbits uh, about 24 and a half years ago. And I was along the railroad tracks where they had brush cut off about a foot tall. And um, at that point, I was going through there and I tripped on the brush and I, I fell. And when I fell into that uh, cut off brush, my gun went off and a it was right in front of my face. My wife Jane, Ron Coburn, my son Jake and I headed to the field the first morning. We were lucky enough to get on an antelope early in the day. And as we came together, Bob and I had the meshes as one. I was going to be his eyes and he was doing everything else. And as we got on the antelope, as I, I looked through the top scope of our double scoped rifle and just told Bob we need to go a little bit to the left or we need to go to the right or we need to go up and down and he brought the sight picture on the antelope. As we've got the good sight picture, we zeroed in. I told him to take his safety off, we're ready to shoot. I could see that he was still, he took a half a breath. He said, Bob, when you feel like you want to shoot, you just start squeezing because you're on your animal. All right, all right. Good well job. Good night. Nice shot. All right, look at it, he's down, he's down. Congratulations, Bob. Congratulations. Thanks for the great eyes. Good job. Good job. All right. Pretty good. You bet. 348 yards. That's unbelievable. That's Quite a great. Shot. Congratulations. Wow. Thanks for being my sighter, Gary. Thanks for being such a great shot. Congratulations, Bob. Thank you. Thank you. Well done, Bob. Excellent work. Thanks, Ron. 
Let's get this thing gutted and out of here. Let's go back to camp, okay? Right, let's go get the truck. Let's go. You know, it really, the hospitality was, you know, way beyond my expectation, and uh, it was just a great time. Many of us would never be able to do this without this kind of organization. So, just want to thank you for one hell of a hunt. This year, all of our hunters, all 15 of them, harvested their antelope by 4.30 on the first day. Now that's 15 antelope in less than 12 hours. That was with the dedication of the guides and the persistence of the hunters. We've proven to everyone just how capable these individuals are. The state average for able-bodied individuals, the antelope average is about 86%. Our average is 100%. In 17 years, we've had a 100% success rate, and we think that that will continue from now on. To all you people out there that may have some kind of disability, uh, don't let it get you down. There's so much enjoyment out in life. Uh, the wildlife is great, the country's great. Do whatever you can to get outdoors, hunt, fish, ski, whatever your interest might be. Uh, that'd be a great way to uh, take the load off and just enjoy life to its fullest. Over the years, we sometimes we think we get into a routine doing this, but each year when the hunters come, uh, it hits home just how important it is to them. When they leave, and in the evening when we have our circle of the wagons at our awards banquet, it brings all of us back down to earth and the reality of just what this means to everybody. And everyone goes home a little more strengthened than when they came, and the hunters as well as the guides and everyone involved. <laughs>